Well, g'day, Max here again. Welcome back to the shop. Well, if you're still with us on this long, drawn-out series on this tailstock chuck, thanks. Um, up to date, I didn't... I mean, I could have cut lots of this out and been... This could have been the finishing video, but... I mean, some people prefer, I guess, to see, like, the whole process. Um, some don't. Those that don't can fast-forward or whatever they do. Um, so, but I prefer to show the whole process. It's not really that I'm stretching it out, it's just that I want to show the whole process. Because, you know, you get people that may want to build a similar thing or they in, are interested in watching the whole process. So, that being said, I have the part after we completed the welding, it's set up now in the four jaw chuck. So, from now on in, our setups in the chuck have to be get more and more accurate as we go along. So we advanced up in the accuracy range from my eyeballs to the old school method of describing a block. So these little gadgets here are not just for marking shit out on the surface plate, they're also for setting jobs up in the lathe. So this is my great grandfather's one and I still use it. So let's head over to the lathe Okay, I'll just go and grab our drawing because we've got to work out where we're travelling as far as width goes. So we have a finished dimension of 40 millimetres from the end of the face to this face here. Bear in mind that still has to be machined off. So that's 40 now. Dimension to the very end of the part at this stage is 61. We've got 58 mil to come off. Flange has got to be 18. It's the width of the flange. It's currently 20. So if I take one millimeter, probably got to take one millimeter off this face here. We'll see how how it's going to marry up to that one.
Now this diameter here, finish size is 75 millimetres. We're going to be close to that now. We are 75.16. Just a little bit there, didn't quite clean up. We'll leave that for the time being. We've got one mil to come off the face, that can come off the rat off the rear. And our 40, 40 millimetres to here. Okay, we're on bang on 40 millimetres there. If anything, we're probably 0.2 to go, so that's good. Okay, so what I'll do now, I think I'll start and just pretty up this weld a bit. Okay, our world's actually looking very good. Okay, I'm gonna just take a smidgen off here, I think, and then I might switch tools over.
Okay, I've just put a piece of paper just to highlight, light up behind the um, job. When I'm doing these radiuses like this, I find I'm better to look, not where the tool is, but what's happening on the opposite side of the job, I get a far better idea on the profile that we're creating. Okay, we're just about there. Probably one more cut on the radius. I think we're, we should be at size on our boss. Yes, so we're on size on our boss, 75 millimeters. I just put a um, radius nose uh, form tool in and just tidy that up a bit better, but it's um, looking good. So I'll put a uh, form tool in just to tickle that up a bit better.
Okay, I'm happy with that. Okay, so after a quick tickle with the form tool, it's um, blended all that in quite nicely. It's just a cosmetic thing. So, what we might do before we take this out is I might just run the boring bar through and we'll just get this here to the um, the shoulder inside to the, to the ID dimension. Well, it's set up like this, I might as well do it. Okay, this bore's got to come out to 44 millimeters. It's a non-critical dimension, so. Okay, we've got 0.3 of a millimetre to come out. Point one two to go. Okay, that should be our 44, which it is. Okay, it's a non-critical, we had the money, right on the money, but it's a non-critical dimension, that one anyway. So I guess the next um, stage, I don't know if this will sharpen the light. So that's the piece, that's what we've just done to the 44 millimeters. So we might as well go ahead and do this um, bearing bore on this end now, because all of this is all finished to size. So we'll do that. Then we can flip her over and finish off the other side. Hardly a drama. So we have to bore this to 51.98 millimeters. Uh, minus nothing, um, plus 0 0.02. So as long as we land between 51.98 and 
and 52, we can't go over 52, we're sweet for the bearing fit and we have to bore it to a depth of 26 millimetres. So we've got just, well, 8 millimetres to come out. Three mil to go. Clear some of this fluff out of the way. I'll bring the revs up, it gives us a, a far better finish, but uh, it does tend to ring a little bit, but just something you have to put up with. I think we've got about a mil to go. Fifty-one point oh six, so under a mil. So we'll take half a mil and we'll get the uh, micrometer out. Fifty one point four
How's our depth going? Yeah, 26 mil. Yep, good for depth. Fifty-one point eight six. Let's get a um, more accurate picture of what's going on here. It's a little bit of warmth in there, so we need this cooled down. Yeah, it can catch you out big time when you're chasing a fine tolerance. Once you start letting that part warm up, you, you lose a thou very quick. That feels alright now, I think. Oh, need the next size down. These are micrometers I've had since my apprentice days. The Japanese made ones, uh, Uchida is the brand, U C H I D A, and they've been very good. I just don't like how. I'll show you one day, I'll get a close up. The half millimeter divisions are on the same side of the thimble as the divisions, but I've had to do that because it's um, got microns on it as well. But saying that, yeah, that's why they've done it. I thought this one had microns on it too, but that's the reason. Just to have the room. Okay. We are chasing 51.98. And we are uh, 51.84. Where's my calculator? Minus 51.84. Uh, 0 0.14 to come out, so 0 0.07 out feed.
Well, this should be it. I should have um, had my air compressor fired up and blow this crap out of here. Okay. Fifty one point nine nine. A smack in the middle of our tolerance. So that's a really good result. Let me just get the bearing. So this little bugger here should be a Nice, nice fit in there. Beautiful. So we'll just round this corner off. We're done. Okay, so we can take this part out. No emery paper was harmed in the manufacture of this part so far. Okay, well we had a win and uh, completed all the machining on this side of the part, so everything came out well. Now, after I'd recorded this video, I actually sat down and just did another quick video which most of you guys have seen and that was I put the question to you guys as to which way you'd like to see me machine the back half of the part which I've already done it <laughs> um, but I've still got the video of it and you guys haven't seen it so yeah so I put the question to you guys which way would you prefer to see me do the part in the four jaw chuck or with soft jaws and I quite honestly didn't expect that much of a response as what I got and so thanks a lot for that it was great so I'm gonna do a final count up over the next few days and see which way well I know which way I did it because I've already done it um, just to see how the numbers tallied up between four jaw and soft jaws so there's a lot of guys out there that have not never seen or had nothing to do with um, soft jaws before, so we'll go through that. Um, what was I going to say? Shit. Oh, my mind's gone blank. I know. I remember. I just looked at the lathe now because I've got another job set up in there and it jigged the old grey matter. Okay, so... Yeah, we're going to go through in the next video the process setting this up as accurately as I can with the measuring gear that I have for machining the um, rear features. And we'll do the same with soft jaws, but the soft jaw uh, method, I've actually got another job that I intend to do with the soft jaws, 
So I will be killing two birds with one stone when we do the soft jaw uh, method as well. So anyway, hopefully you'll stick around to see that and also the remainder of the machining of the parts. So anyway, cheers. Thanks for watching and we should hopefully catch you in the next video.